Hey guys, Daniel James here, and uh, in this video today, what I'd like to do is do a kind of uh, behind the scenes look at my uh, official demo for Cine Samples Drums of War 2. Uh, now, what I'll do first is I'll, is I'll play you the track and then uh, we'll go through each section and, and take a look at which instruments I used and how I wrote for them. So uh, here's just a little snippet of the track. there's just a little uh, snippet of the track if you want to hear more it's uh, up on my uh, hybrid 2 soundcloud page and i'll post the link in the uh, information bit so yeah what, what what i'd like to do is um take a look at like each kind of section and then uh, just just show which instruments i use and how i layered them all together which is one of the things that um drums of war 2 is actually pretty damn good at is is all the sounds work seamlessly together so there's no hassle there which is brilliant I've had uh, some percussion before where you get all the sounds, but they don't kind of fit together. So these these are all sounding good. So this first section here, uh, we've got in some daikos, taikos, we've got some shakers and some chang chang oh, and some jun jun. So we start with the daikos up here. Uh, pattern looks like this. As you can see, it's very, uh, if I put this on, so it's on a 30 second grid at the minute. And you can see I've actually got some 30 second notes in there. Uh, which if you don't know music very well is a very fast note um, Sixteenths is more common. So that's these notes here, but uh, One of the main reasons I, I put in so many 30 seconds is I really wanted to highlight the uh, The amount of um, round robins that drums of war 2's actually got and if you don't know what a round robin is essentially uh, When you play um, samples, so you've got a fast part like this uh, if if you don't have round robin and you play a line this fast, you get this kind of, uh, it's called the machine gun effect, which is where the same sound plays uh, plays after itself very quickly. So it sounds like a machine gun. So it's like da 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 because each note sounds exactly the same. But when you've got round robin, basically what they do is they rec uh, record the same sound uh, many times. So when you play like the same thing again, it actually triggers a different uh, wave file so that you're not hearing the same again, which is actually more realistic. And round robins work superbly for uh, percussion. So yeah, so if I just solo up the daikos here, uh, we take a listen to these, uh, pay attention to when it plays these uh, faster notes. Let me just stretch these out so you can see their sixteenths. So I'll, I'll stick it on follow. Just when you see um, these 30 seconds here, listen to, to how, um, geez, this to how natural they sound. So let's take a listen. As you can hear, they're very, you know, they sound like natural rolls, which which is one of the things I really wanted to highlight when uh, when I was writing this demo. And as you can see, I've got all the, uh, if you look down here, these are these are velocity layers. So the higher this, this little dot is, is the harder, essentially, the drum is being hit in the virtual space. So it goes loud, and then the roll is a bit quiet. I mean, if I turn this up, you can hear how... how Not that I would ever do it like that. So as you can see, I've I've got this kind of uh, this offbeaty kind of rhythm going on that you know repeats and gradually builds. And then I've got this section over here where you get this kind of all over the place rhythm, which is uh, which adds a bit of rhythmic interest before you move into the next section, which is what the the aim of it was. And when you're uh, just a quick tip while I'm while I'm on the subject is if you're ever programming your own um, drum parts, which I highly recommend instead of using loops, you know, that way you're sounding a bit more like yourself. Um, when you're uh, 
uh, when you're thinking about which parts should be going fast and which should be going slow when you're playing when you've got uh, high instruments like a daiko here they sound uh, when you layer that okay I'm, I'm mumbling a little bit but basically you want to put your faster instruments as higher pitched ones like this daiko here it seems to have more drive whereas if you did the same thing with the uh, I mean, so this this is my taiko, which uh, a taiko is a big bassy drum. I mean, if you did the same, you know, it sounds a bit kind of a bit kind of out there. So the big stuff is the you know you you want these big gaps in between, and then the the high higher stuff go faster. That was a bit of a ramble, but uh, just ignore that for a second. Okay, so now we'll look at the the uh, the taiko, which is the big drum, which uh, has got this very you know huge and commanding sound. Helps if you uh, solo the right track. There we go. And uh, again, those round robins are kicking in pretty strong. And uh, in with the tycos, I wanted to show. Uh, I more wanted to show how big and commanding they were, as opposed to the round robins, which are, are being you know amply shown by the tycos. Okay, so uh, that's that part. So let's just move down. What else have we got in this track? Okay, we've got. Um, some shakers which sound like this and uh, as you can see I've programmed it so it goes da -da 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 -da. <laughs> it's hard to explain I'm, I'm not sure how you would explain a shaker with your mouth but so this bit here what the what um the way this one's programmed is you get the the tighter almost like the tighter um, articulations of the shaker down below and then the further up you go, the looser it is. So you can, you know, you can kind of do 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 do. This will sound completely different. Okay, it didn't sound that different, but you get the idea. So there's different articulations. I think it'll probably show it on the window. I'll just load it up. So we take a look at the. Uh, Click on this one here. If you look down here, say. So. so you can you can pro you know you can plan ahead your own little rhythms, which is what I've done in this little section here. You get a took a dirt. And with shakers, I always like to double them up. So I've, uh, I've I'm using the Chang Chang, which is uh, if you consider this this shaker a more kind of soft kind of airy sound of percussion. If, if, you know, you need more than that. So I've, this is almost like the body of the shaker. This is the Chang Chang, which has got a more harsh metallic sound to it. And that's that's being used just to double the uh, almost the accents of the uh, of the percussion. So it's going. In fact, I, I believe it's actually. Uh, helping double the, the daiko as well. I see it's it's doubling the taiko rhythm as well, so if you get this. Which which is also helping add to the uh it's hard to explain but I keep saying it's hard to explain but then I go on to explain it. So anyway um when you're when you're writing percussion uh, a big a big factor that's very important is layering. So uh like I've got, let's just listen to this uh, this taiko pattern I've got here, which sounds pretty good by itself, you know. If I put the shaker in, you know, it's got a good drive, but you can add a bit more kind of um, bit, a bit more weight to the sound, even even though that the Chang Chang itself isn't um, like big in its sound. It's it's a very strong sound, you know. It's a very snappy sound, and if you throw that on top um, of the uh, of the the accents within the taiko rhythm, or in, you know, in an, any other rhythm, it will make those those parts of the the uh, the rhythm sound stronger. So if we listen to that passage with the chang chang turned on, I mean, particularly this part here. Listen to how strong this beat is with this chang chang. Now if I turn it off. 
So as you can hear, there's a very significant difference within um, within the actual overall sound. And like I say, the Chang Chang isn't that full of a sound. But when it's layered with something else, it makes those beats sound a lot stronger. That's one of the principles of layering is when you're layering, you're, you're essentially trying to make things bigger, you know, more, more full. And of course, you, you as a composer will decide when something needs to be more full. And uh, it appears on, I've got a uh, Jun Jun, Jun, I can't pronounce it anyway. Just, just hitting the, uh, again, this is for layering purposes, just to accent the downbeat is I've just got it on the first beat of every bar, so. So it's not really doing much, just adding a little bit more thud to the, the bass end. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is move into this uh, this second little section here, which is where um, I wanted to, you know, make things go a little bit crazy, you know, show how active you can make make things sound. And I'm also introducing the frame drum into the track. Now uh, with the frame drum, again, it was, uh, the aim was to highlight the, uh, the round robins. So you can see I've got lots of these, uh, of these kind of sixteenths uh, and short notes, and it sounds a bit like this. And again, with the layering, if you listen uh, to the metals, th that's the next track down. You see, uh, if we listen to these metals here, it's not playing anything uh, spectacular, but it's being used just to double the um, to double the accents of the frame drum. So we take a listen to the frame drum. So essentially, if I take a look on here, it's doubling this note and this note. So if you if you listen to uh, to this whole passage again when I play it, this note and this note will will sound uh, stronger than the rest of them. So it's it's putting the uh, the focus on these two notes. Whereas if I turn this off, you'll hear this, this, and this. which is not the rhythm I wanted. I mean, it's, it's fine, but I, I wanted to keep the strength. As you can see, this second note is actually stronger than this one, but because of the layering, uh, which was the intent, this note then becomes louder. Well, not louder, it becomes more present. So if I just play this from the start. So because it's, um, it's actually meant to be the other way around, but because you get this, uh, because your ears hearing the accent here, as opposed to here, you get this kind of da da sound. It's it's, uh, it's 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 a weird one to, to kind of explain with your mouth again. But it's like uh, when you when you're playing it just straight, it's it's da 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 da. Whereas when you put those metals in as a layer, it goes da 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 da. You get this kind of da da sound, which is uh, what I wanted, you know, because I, I love me some rhythm. So let's take a listen again. Almost makes this sound really offbeat, which is which is a good thing. And again, layering it with a bit of Chang Chang. So this this is more um, instead of uh, using the Chang Chang as a layer here, it's, it, I'm using it as, as uh, more of a contrast. So whereas in this section here, it was being used to uh, strengthen the other instruments. Here, it's almost going off by itself. Which is what you know, which is what you would call, um, I forget, but it's it's uh, yeah, contrast that's what you call contrast. So I'm using it for layering, then I'm using it as a solo instrument, then I'm using it as layering again. And yeah, so this section here builds up into a very crazy section like, like this. Now this section was pretty crazy and there's actually quite a good um, polyrhythm going on. I'll go into that in a second, but I just wanted to uh, again highlight the uh, the Chang Chang, which is now, which is actually one of the main focuses of the track, even though you don't realize it. But um, So we've gone from layering to strengthen the instruments here. So that's layering and then it comes over here and it's actually doing its own rhythm. Which, uh, which is giving a kind of offbeaty shuffle to the whole thing. So we go. 
and now it moves on to underpinning and actually holding the entire groove um, just gluing it all together so it doesn't feel too chaotic so it's just playing like a simple 16th pattern so and as you can see there's a lot of 16ths going on here and it still sounds very natural and very snappy Which is cool. So, so as you can see, it's gone through three different phases, and uh, yeah, and I've layered that up with the uh, the softer sound of the uh, the fish shaker, which is doing more of a uh, more of an eighth note kind of um, accent. So you're hearing more of a duh 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 duh, which should. I'm not sure because it's quite quiet yet you, you know you don't hear it too well but what it should be doing is making the eighth note within the chang chang sound again with the layering sound a bit more present so you're hearing more of the duh duh you're hearing this essentially if i take that out it should sound it should sound more 16 -y. So, what, it, again, I'm just trying to focus on how important the uh, aspect of layering is in percussion. If I turn, even like if we just listen to this again by itself, how soft this sound is. I mean, you wouldn't expect that to add much to this track, but it, without it, this section here sounds very 16th note. So very kind of da 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 da. But if you throw it on top, it, it becomes more eighth note. It feels more like da, da, well, da, 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 da. No, da, 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 da. Sounds more like that. Because the higher end is being filled out by these parts here. Which is all cool. And then uh, up here, I've got this... Uh, this, this crazy poly rhythm going on between the uh, the daiko and the taiko. So we start with the, uh, the daiko. Again, the the daiko's uh, purpose in this track was to be the uh, was to be the you know the exhibitor of round robin to show how well it sounds. So I've got this. Uh, if you look down here, I've got this kind of uh, offbeat triplet. Well, it's not triplet. This kind of offbeaty kind of rhythm. So it sounds like this. And here I'm playing a triplet. Da, da. Which is cool, and then uh, I'm doing something. Uh, I'm doing a polyrhythm here, and if you don't know what polyrhythm, it's essentially like two rhythms going off at once, and then they kind of interlock, and they uh, they sound crazy and fun. So uh, take a listen. This is the taiko rhythm, and uh, this time I'm actually using the taiko pretty fast because I wanted this whole section to sound very kind of. In my head, it almost sounded like the Born Identity or something, you know, very kind of crazy percussion. So uh, just take a listen to this sound. Oh, from here. So you got the dum gada, ga dum gada, ga. But when you layer layer it with that with this rhythm here, you get this this very odd off kilter kind of uh, rhythm, which sounds chaotic, which is uh, indeed the purpose of that part. So you get this part here. You get burga. <laughs> I wish it was like uh, Ableton Live was like Cubase where I can show two MIDI tracks at the same time. So if you look here, this gap here is being filled by a, a kick. So you get there. So you're feeling dum ga dum dum ga dum And then, uh, <laughs> then the crescendo roll here, which is done by just having 16ths with the uh, velocity going up is being accented by da 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 being accented by sounds very snappy and uh, full which again was the intent and, uh, and then it, it switches back to um, the other rhythm which is like this But what I've done here is instead of keeping the uh, the Chang Chang doing its uh, separate rhythm, which is at uh, this part, 
I've actually got it doing both now. So again, it's changed. So it's gone from layered to its own rhythm to pinning down the track. And then, uh, then it moves on to this, which is essentially holding down the 16th, but at the same time playing its own rhythm. But it's a more kind of offbeat rhythm, as you can see here. So on the beat would be here. So each of these notes is playing uh, off the beat. So you, you get this really, you know, this really shuffly sound. Which is pretty cool. And with the metals. So uh, yeah, again, just using the Chang Chang, it's completely contrasting the, uh, the entire rhythm section. And now we're moving into um, a bit more of a breakdown-y. Breakdown section, where I'm bringing in the Doom Beck, which is, uh, I just load up the instrument. I'm not even going to attempt to describe what a dumbbeck looks like without showing you a picture. So here's a here's a dumbbeck here, and it sounds as you heard that was very. Um, this was another one of those instruments which I was I was showing the round robins off a little bit so. So again, you've got um, different articulations laid out over the keys. So we've got some rolls down here, some snappy hits up here, some bassier hits here, and then some slaps here. And as you can see, I've kind of approached the rhythm like um, almost like an entire rhythm section. So it's got its own bass and its own snappy notes. As you heard there, I've got some very, I've got some 30 second notes, which again, um, Drums of War 2 is handling perfectly because of those round robins. Just sounded good. And it, again, the Chang Chang is more of a... Uh... So I've kind of got an offbeat shuffle going on with the Chang Chang there. And uh, but the but the fish shaker is uh, still holding down these these eighth notes. So between the three, you've already got this kind of shuffly rhythm without anything else being added on. And uh, the the ju the jun the jun. Someone's going to have to correct me. The jun ensemble down here is playing this. Now that's more underpinning the rhythm again. Uh, and it's actually, I believe, uh, doubling the taiko, is it? No, not in this section. So we've got this whole kind of lighter section. So I've taken out the, uh, if you look up here, uh, wherever this is green is basically just a single taiko hit. So as you can see, this section here is uh, has got no deep instruments except for this uh, Jun ensemble, which is giving it almost its, its solo as the bass instrument. So as you heard, we've got this funky rhythm going on with uh, with the higher instruments and the dumbbeck, like this. But uh, the, the bass end's quite thin, so the, the jun is getting its uh, its chance to shine here. So you get that. But then uh, up here, we bring back in. Uh, the di the dicos which sound like this. So now we now <laughs> that at the end that at the end actually uh, was carefully planned and it's quite quite complex to show. But uh, basically, I've got something filling in every one of these uh, thirty second notes here. So a lot of them are carried by the dico. But if you listen, there's, there shouldn't be at least uh, any gaps between these notes. If uh, if the daiko is not playing, it's something else is. So you get this kind of very kind of uh, fast sound at the end. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how well that made sense. So as you can see here, there is a gap between the daiko notes, and 
if we move down here, something else will be filling in these notes. So you get these, uh, you get this very fast kind of, which almost is, is the equivalent of a drum fill, but uh, with lots of instruments going on at the same time. And then up here we get this uh, this big daiko sound, not daiko, taiko. Yeah, it's like this. I'm using, if you hadn't noticed already, I'm using the uh, the taiko as basically the underpinning of the track uh, for the bass end. So uh, it's almost like the kick drum. That rhythm sounded out of time because I was uh, I wanted to show something, um, just to I wanted to emphasise how uh, the shakers have got round robin as well. So I threw in some uh, extra little rhythms for this, just to you know this is how easy it is to program a rhythm. I mean, I take this out and then I've got this blank section here, you know, just by. You know, crudely dragging these around. You know, I've all, this should sound okay. Okay, it sounded a bit shit, but you know, <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying. So if you, you know, if you, you're not the best percussive player in the world, you know, you can program a very relatively simple uh, pattern, and you can you can still get this kind of cool sound out of it. Let me just double this up. The Chang Chang. Uh, also doing something like this you know you can throw in uh, 30 second notes if you want so we change this into a, a snappy 30 second section like that and then make this open perhaps it's a bit loud that was a bit quiet Even do something a bit, a bit crazy, you know. Uh, you know, throw in some triplet pattern, perhaps. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. Just having some fun with it here. That sounded terrible, but you get the idea. You know, you can you can throw things in, and it's you know they're easy to. Um, to just get rhythms flowing. As you can see, this rhythm here isn't particularly complex. You know, this if I take this out, the shuffle goes. You can see here, so we've got uh, one, like one and two and three and four and that's all it's doing, one and two and three and four. Two and three and four and I'm not sure if the, my voice syncs up to the music, but it's essentially one and two and three and four and, you know, so if you put something on the E, so the one E and uh, two E, you get a shuffle. Or if you actually get a sound, there we go. You know, so just, just working out all these cool little rhythms, you know, have fun with your rhythm. You know, that completely changes that whole section. If I take these two notes out. Sounds okay, it sounds a bit boring. Throw them in, and it gives it an instant shuffle. You know, throw a few more in, why not? You know, so you can create all these uh, these awesome rhythms, and uh, so yeah, that's basically the the behind the scenes look at how I actually put the track together. Sorry if it was a bit rambly in places. But, you know, I wanted to go over some of my rhythmic ideas behind the track, and there, there's some things that I you know that I, uh, about the library that I could talk about now, which I hadn't so far. So if we uh, you know go find like the uh, the Daiko Taiko section, there's uh, Drums of War and all the new Cine samples. I think uh, Drums of War One has now got a similar interface now which is free, a free update if you've got Drums of War 1. 
you get this interface and essentially you've got your reverb delay and you know all your filters they're already put in but they're all bypassed so if i uh, find a part with the uh So this is my uh, the Tyco ensemble rhythm here. So now if I like go to my delay and just turn it off, instantly you'll get this this crazy kind of nice rhythm. If you uh, unbypass the right one, that is. Of course, you can low pass it, you know. You know, or even high pass. You know, if you wanted to use the Tyco as more of an airy sound, not sure why, but you know, some people might. If I put it in there. And of course, these are all, uh, these would be all automatable by using the auto feature. So, you know, I could put that on the calf. So, if I wanted to then. So this is now attached. So if I wanted to, if you take a look at this uh, calf here, as I move the uh, automation, I can actually automate this. So this is a high pass filter. So say I wanted some kind of like filter sweep thing. So it almost feels like it's uh, a roll. It would go like this. Maybe bring it in a bar earlier, bring this down. So it almost sounds like a, a pitch, a pitch drop. Um, I'll just solo it out so you can hear what it did. And if I put delay with that, you'll get some weird sounds. It's pretty cool. Maybe some chorus. Maybe detune it. Why not? Getting a bit crazy with it now, take the mids out. And all you have to do is uh, command click, or I'm guessing it would be control click, and it would set it back to normal. Uh, so, as you can hear, that's set, and then I can bypass and bypass, and that's it, and they're all switched off. So, I mean, like you could you can get creative with it as well. I mean, it's not just tune that as well don't know it's not just for um you know being crazy with it like i sometimes am i mean you can actually add shuffle to a track so if i find part where find a part which isn't particularly um interesting so like like this one the chang chang which was its own rhythm and it's uh, the purpose of it was the contrast but um if i just find this and then whack the delay on you know and then uh, maybe shift it onto triplets You know, it's instantly created a different rhythm. So this is what it was originally. So you're wanting to add a bit of spice, you know, to your to your rhythms. You just whack on a delay, maybe playing triplets or something a bit faster. And so it goes from this to this by just one click of the button. And the feed would be the feedback. So that's how loud um, the tail of it is. So if I turn this up, like quite high. It will actually bleed over into the uh, the next note, and then the delays will get delays like this. Of course, you can turn the dry off completely, so all you're hearing is the wet signal. So I put this back in context. Uh, you can hear that's a, that's a completely weird sound. Have I? Bypass that. You know, you're getting that duh, 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 duh. I'll just turn this up so you can hear it a bit more prominent. Now, if I put the uh, turn the bypass off, so I'm turning the delay on with the dry all the way down, you get a completely different rhythm. And 
course, you'd probably want to turn it off for the more busy section. But with solid things, you can create these completely different rhythms, you know. And then maybe a bit of uh, low pass filter as well. You know, if I could automate this to uh, close. Or perhaps open. So yeah, it's, you know, the built-in, um, sorry, built, there's a T in that word. Uh, the built-in effects, you know, are perfect for this kind of thing. So, uh, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this, uh, this kind of over, overall, no, this kind of behind the scenes look at how I built the Trek. Um, again, I apologize if it's a bit rambly, rambly, but, uh, you know, I kind of wanted to have a look at everything I used. Of course, I didn't use every instrument. For those of you who are wondering what instruments are actually in, uh, Drums of War, so it's got Chang Chang, I use, so I used these ones, that one. So there's a gong in it, a hang drum, mixing bells, I used Mel's and King. There's Mondo Toms, One Shot Shakers, uh, Shime Daikos, Taikos, Tabla, and there's Sub Boom. So I mean, there's more There's more to the library, but you know, hopefully you, you enjoyed my uh, my demo track. And, uh, and I, you know, it's pretty easy. I mean, what I wrote wasn't particularly hard, you know, but um, if, you, if you get the concepts of layering down and you know, making things bigger by putting other instruments in and creating these polyrhythms, you know, these offbeat kind of off time rhythms. You know, you can create something quite interesting. I mean, you know, you, you can get all these kind of crazy ish, crazy ish rhythms, which is uh, quite cool. So, uh, what else? Oh, yeah, also, I wanted to. Uh, Another thing I just wanted to mention is uh, the whole time I've had um, Arts Acoustic Reverb on. So uh, Drums of War is, is a pretty dry library. And that's actually the kind of, that's the way things are actually going at the minute because reverbs are getting better. So you, you really want um, your libraries, well, some people do, you mainly want your, your libraries to be quite dry so then you can shape them afterwards. So if I turn the delay off, When they're dry like this it gives you um ultimate you know control when it comes to um, mixing it into the track like some percussion libraries um have got like these the, the, like the delays almost cooked into the sound you know not delay sorry the reverbs cooked into the sound whereas when you get them dry like this you know you can actually you know within a mix especially with percussion when it's this busy you know you want to have a lot of control so what i've done here is is i've put over you know arts acoustic in this in their stage hall and of course, now I can control how much of that reverb I want in the track. So if, if it's a, a quite dense mix, you know, I, I, and I want the reverb sound, if it's cooked into the samples, there's nothing I can do. I'm stuck with that. Whereas when they're dry and you put a reverb on top, you know, I can dial in as, as much or as little reverb as I like. You could be crazy with the sounds. I mean, you could even do something completely, you know, out of the world kind of thing. Not that you'd want to, but you know, you never know. There's some crazy people out there. So yeah, the drier the, the drier the samples, you know, the more control you get in the mix later. I mean, some some percussion does come with nice reverb built in but like i say you with uh, with with cooked in reverb you know you're losing the control if it comes to a mix and when you've got you know so many different libraries that are all, uh, sorry so many different patches which are all working so nicely together it's good to have that um that afterwards control you know so yeah um i hope you've all enjoyed this little uh this little behind the scenes look at my uh, official demo like i say i'll put the uh link to the soundcloud um to the actual track which is on soundcloud uh, in the information below and uh, any comments or questions you've got about you know either 
what I wrote or you know drums of war to ask me and I'll, I'll answer as best I can uh, so yeah cheers for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one bye